Hey guys, how's it going? So I want to go over this recent teaching that Brian Denlinger put out there that God the Father is the soul of the Godhead. He's been teaching this silly nonsense stuff for a while, denying the Trinity. And um, basically he teaches that God is um, made up of the Father, which is the soul, the Son, which is the body, and God, the Spirit, which is the Spirit. And so this is a false analogy. And you know what? Since he's been saying this stuff, I've really considered it, and I was wondering, you know, I started to question whether man is even three parts or not, because I've looked at different studies before, and I think that's what I've taught previously, because that's just kind of what's popular, and, you know, I didn't really look into it a lot, you know. It seems to be okay um, at first, you know, the Bible speaks of, you know, man having a body, and then you see verses where it talks about a soul, and it talks about a spirit, so it seems true but i believe now that it's false so first of all man's not made up of three parts i would say that man is made up of two parts basically an immaterial and a material so body and soul and soul and spirit are interchangeable and so i want to come out with a teaching on that hopefully soon uh I'm going to put more work into that but i just took all note of all the verses that denlinger went over in this video to try to say that God the Father is the soul of the Godhead, and this is absurd stuff. From what I've learned from studying, what Denlinger is teaching is similar to a heresy known as Apollinarianism, which teaches that the Holy Spirit was the soul of Jesus. And so that's basically what he's saying. He's saying Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, and the Spirit is the Spirit. So it's kind of the same idea. People also say what he's teaching is similar to modalism. He's denying the the correct tr tr trinity. Um, and instead of teaching that the Father, Son, and Spirit are three persons in one being, he's teaching that they are three parts, which is just absurd. But let's go over some of these verses that he talks about. He says, uh, you know, Leviticus 26, 11 through 13, and, and I don't even really have to read the whole thing, but there's this part in here where the Lord says that my soul shall abhor you. My soul shall abhor you. So... Um, Denlinger goes on to say that the Catholic Trinity teaches that there are three different gods, each with a body, soul, and spirit. And this is a straw man argument, okay? Um, That's not what the classic Trinity position is. So he's lying. It doesn't teach three different gods, each with a body, soul, and spirit. It teaches that God is one being consisting of three persons. And so here you can see the integrity of Denlinger, that he has no integrity, and uh, he doesn't care about the truth at all. He's just going to say whatever he wants to say. And um, so basically this verse says, you know, the Lord says, my soul shall abhor you. And he gives, you know, a handful of passages which are basically the same idea. They're meant to be taken figuratively, okay? We're not supposed to understand this as... Um, taking this literally and saying, okay, God has a soul, even if taken literally, being that God has a soul and his and only his soul is spoken of instead of his, or, okay. Uh, okay, if we took this literally to mean that God has a soul, okay, then, and if uh, we were meant to, to understand this, that just his soul was being spoken of. He says, my soul shall abhor you. So let's say somebody's going to make an argument saying God has a soul, and he's saying that his soul abhors them, okay, <clears throat> opposed to his body or whatever else. It would not prove that God the Father, a person, is the soul of the Godhead. Such an idea is absurd, found nowhere in Scripture. The Father, Son, and Spirit are persons, not parts. A person possesses parts or substances. Okay. So I have a soul. I have a body. But that does not mean that my body or that my soul is me. They are part of me. I am a person. And I possess these parts. Okay. So I say, you know, my body or my soul. It doesn't mean that it is me, that that my soul is, you know, me, basically. <laughs> um, 
you know, just like if I possess something, like I said, my book, this is my book, I possess this book, right? That doesn't mean that I am the book. How could you come to those conclusions? That's absolutely insane, okay? That's not logic, that's not reality. So basically I said, you know, he, he repeats the same things, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth, my soul delighteth, my shall not my soul be avenged. It's just saying the Lord. Uh, the soul is speaking for him. His, you know, it's being used for his entirety. It's figurative. And he's saying, you know, I hate these things. These things, you know, I despise. These things I delight in. Uh, shall not my soul be avenged? Denlinger says mockingly, no scripture says that God the Father is the soul. Here's another one. And I say, where does it say God the Father is the soul? Nowhere, not even implied. <laughs> um, we go on, it says, lest my soul depart from thee, my soul loathe them, and whom my soul is well pleased. And this is really where it gets even more interesting. And I want to say that I do want, I want to make more videos as he's going to be coming out with more videos and I want to do some stuff on the whiteboard where I'm going to try to explain things better and draw things out. So hopefully it'll be more helpful than me just talking. You can, you can see what I'm talking about. Denlinger says that there's no scripture proving that God is three persons. Yes, there is all over scripture. The father is a person, the son is a person and the Holy Spirit is a person. We know this because, you know, they have personal attributes and they're spoken of as persons, you know, it says he referring to the father, you know, or he or I referring to the son or he referring to the Holy Spirit as the comforter. That's language uh, as a person. Who is he? Who is she? Who are we? They're persons. That's language used of a person, not a part. You don't say who is he and, you know, speaking of a body part, you know, like an arm or a leg or something. Who is he? That's not a he, that's not a person, that's a part. Just like body and soul are parts. Denlinger needs to prove that the Father, Son, and Spirit are not persons. This is what he needs to do, and he can't, because it's impossible. Because they are persons. Not parts. My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Okay. Jesus speaking says, Then he saith unto him, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry you here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Denlinger says that the soul is the Father being sorrowful. So when Jesus said, My soul is exceeding far sorrowful, he thought that he means that the Father is exceeding sorrowful. That's absolutely absurd. My soul? Whose soul? Jesus's, the Son. He saith, uh, he saith unto them. Who is he? It's Jesus. My soul. The soul that Jesus possesses. And again, this is just figurative, just meaning that Jesus is sorrowful. Okay. Does Jesus have a human soul? Yes or no. If Jesus is fully God and fully man, then he must have had a human body and soul. If Jesus did not have a human soul, then he was not fully human, and therefore sacrifice was insufficient. Now, that's crucial. Because, you know, Denlinger is teaching that God is the soul of the Godhead. God the Father is the soul. So, did Jesus have a human soul? That's what we need to know. Because if not, then he's, he's teaching that Jesus wasn't fully man. And so, here's a Chaldean creed. You know, therefore, following the Holy Fathers, we all with one accord teach men to acknowledge one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at once complete in Godhead and complete in manhood, truly God and truly man, consisting of a reasonable soul and body, of, what, of one substance with the Father as regards as his Godhead, and at the same time of one substance with us as agents, his manhood, like us in all respects apart from sin. Okay, he had to be truly God and truly man. He had to have a human soul and body. And so there's verses that teach that Jesus is fully man, Hebrews 2.14, where for as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also 
he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. So he had to take on flesh and blood. That includes a body and a soul of a human. He became man. You also got First John 4, 1 through 3 there. But let's continue. Denlinger says that the Holy Spirit did not die on the cross. Remember, he gave up the ghost. And what did he say about the Father? Why hast thou forsaken me? <laughs> So this is just, again, absurd. The Holy Spirit did not die on the cross, remember? He gave up the ghost. <laughs> oh, Denlinger. Yeah, it was Jesus who died on the cross. When it says he gave up the ghost, that's speaking of his human soul. What did he say about the Father? Why has thou forsaken me? God the Father didn't forsake Jesus, okay? He perceived that in his humanness, in his human humanity. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, this shows that Brian does not understand any of these verses. Either one of those, or any of these. <laughs> Again, he reads some parallel verses, Mark 14, 34 through 36. Denlinger says, I'm not just saying that there is no God the Father and it's all just Jesus, okay? Well, what are you saying, Denlinger? John 12, 27 and 28. This is really absurd again. I don't even know another word for it, but now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, Behold, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Denler, Denlinger interprets this verse to say that Jesus is speaking to his soul, which is the Father. This is insanity. So he says, Now is my soul troubled, whose soul Jesus' is soul, and what shall I say? Father. So Denlinger says, he's speaking to his soul, which is the Father. Come on now, are you really that stupid? That's like me saying my soul is troubled, you know, because I'm scared or I'm hurt, you know, something's wrong, you know, I'm, I have a broken heart. And so what shall I say? And he's talking about praying to the Father because he's troubled. Just like the saints would pray to the Father because they are troubled. I mean, it's really pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty basic there. Again, does Jesus have a human soul? Does he have two souls? How can a soul be a person? Answer these questions, Dinlinger. A person possesses a soul, not a person is a soul. Then he says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Basically, back to the Old Testament things. Same thing, it's figurative. It's just saying that God has no pleasure in him in himself. God has no pleasure in whoever draws back. God himself has no pleasure in those who draw back. Okay, the soul is just speaking of him, figuratively. Anyways, I plan to do more videos on this, just uh, share what you think. But the important thing here, too, I think, is that Jesus, or Denlinger is denying that Jesus has a human soul. And um, it's going to be interesting as he tries to clarify more things. He's going to get deeper and deeper, and, and every verse, you know, he's going to misinterpret. So, uh but really, just reading this verse, now my soul is troubled, what shall I say, Father? And he's saying that the Father is Jesus' soul. It's, you know, none of these verses say that the Father is the soul of the Godhead. And such an idea is just stupid. And so, it's like, is he really purposely doing this? Is he really that ignorant? I don't know. So, thanks for watching, guys. God bless.